was. <laughs> so I am, um, so uh, Winston Henderson, a serial, what I call a um, uh, career path was engineer, management consultant, lawyer, and then kind of startup team guy up here in Boston for, for a little over a decade. And um, my new venture uh, is called Sankofa, which is a, East Af uh, a West African word that is um, associated with a bird that flies forward while looking backwards and carrying it on its back. And usually means something about uh, bringing forth new things uh, in life, but being respectful of the ancestors. And so we're trying to do that. In technology, we call ourselves cracking the culture code in technology. And you say, so what does that mean? In all honesty, like most startups, we're figuring it out. But what are we attempting to do? Well, maybe we're attempting to, to produce things like better analytical tools that start, start to take into account the fact that data has deficiencies, algorithms have deficiencies, and that matters not only to the, the issues that we just talked about, but to companies that are trying to underst actually understand the market, but their tools don't allow them to do so as much. An example. So has, has anybody seen the recent City Awake report about millennials? There's a combination of work between the Boston Foundation and, uh, and uh, the Chamber of Commerce. And so I'm going to save you 20 pages of the reading because it's going to be very obvious, but I'm glad they did it. What basically said is, we talk about millennials in the city. Turns out millennials are not always college educated, upwardly mobile white men, right? <laughs> there are other things that go into people in that. And it's an age group that's like 18 to 37. Of course, there are differences, right? <laughs> so it turns out that Somerville and Cambridge are places of choice for the tech technorati, right? Austin and some of the places downtown are the places of choice for the upwardly mobile, college-educated professional, right? Then you get into Roxbury and Dorchester and East Boston and Mattapan, and, and, and you start to see that, you know what their conclusion was? And, and I credit them for, for documenting this. There are differences, people. There are differences in the neighborhood. There are differences in the ethnicities. They do different things, right? And so um, if you're trying to do an analytics for addressing millennials, you want to sell to, understand e-commerce, and reach, and you're sitting at your terminal, license one of these tools that basically allow you to usually just say male, female, age group, keywords, and put in your own data. Guess how accurate it can be when we know that on mobile and social, people interact with their dad in very, very tight circles. So the fact that you and my friend was Brazilian, if he was sitting next to another Brazilian American in this, and you look at his Twitter feed, his Facebook feed, his Instagram feed, his e-commerce feed, they'd be different. And so the thought that you could broad brush, and we learned at the election, even with that data, that maybe you can't broad brush white women, and maybe you need to dig in a little bit differently. And so, so we, we, we deal with the fact that um, this data stuff is, is difficult, it's nuanced. You can't use old world categories and and layer on new word technology without doing the doing the translation. So you figure out how do we get so and dashboards that are that are allowing allowing you to better understand data for advertising, marketing, e commerce, business analytics at the very least, and power tools that give better fit. You know, all these tools about how do I find people to get them things that they want and do the things they want in, in better fit is what we work on. So how do we get here? Uh, a couple of friends and I who had uh, done companies and, uh, and, and worked for companies in law firms, et cetera, sat down, we saw that the Deval Patrick administration was coming to an end, and we had done a lot with him, and we knew that two years from then, the Obama administration was going to an end, and we had done a lot with, with them. And we were saying, wow, how historic. We have so much more work to do. <laughs> and even with, with the great leaders in those positions, there were still some things that we wish we had gotten done during that time frame, and with nonprofits and working with governments and other things, and we realized that some of the stuff that was going here on here in Cambridge was moving faster. And so the companies were, you know, in that same time frame, same 10 years, think about how many companies, billion dollar companies were built, right? And how the paradigm from the time uh, of Google, when people were looking at the PhD educated young millennial, changed to now is the college dropout. Like, so even the paradigm within the tech elite, you're looking for a different paradigm. And maybe we were going about thinking about things in, in an incomplete way. Maybe if the demographics of the country had been growing, not shifted because it's been happening, right? Where 30% uh, of people of color, right? And the millennial sensibility at the very least 
was more open and multicultural. What does that all mean? And how can it be if the tech industry is 2%, black and Latino combined 2%, uh, maybe just by missing people, you're missing some things. So if you're talking about what data, what algorithms, maybe you're missing some things, mostly because the pipeline of people and issues and things that you prioritize when you're building a company. So here's the thing. You start a company based on your perception or your perception of need or other people's needs. Then you go. They say, lean startup. <laughs> Prioritize an approach. Do it really fast. Prove your market and then grow in this kind of rapid way. Then build your markets really fast. Well, who in there is surprised that Airbnb, that is a housing company, a hotel company, had an issue with discrimination with people inviting people into that house? Like, where was the tech company that didn't think this one through based on the history? That's not a technology issue. Is it a data issue? Yes. Is it an algorithm issue? It's a product design issue as well. Based on the fact that people are thinking that technology is solving the people problems without solving the people problems newly with the new technology. So what does St. Kobe do? We say, you know what? People are what's missing in tech. The people thought. So instead of learning from what we, we realized in marketing and in commercial products and the things that happened badly with sexual harassment, I mean, how is tech learning? I don't understand how tech is making the same mistakes that industry has, has, has made. So we said, well, we're going to over-involve people, find out what the gaps are. You know, are there really gaps based on uh, gaps in people? So we had this huge intern program. We're going to hire college students all over the country. Oakland, Los Angeles, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Maryland, Baltimore, DC, New York, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, Newark, London, Bermuda, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Rio, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. And we're going to double that. And then we're going to start working with community colleges and formerly incarcerated gentlemen and 40-year-old 40 mothers, single mothers. The 40-year-old single mothers tell us, you know what? My Facebook disconnected to my Uber is useless because I still have to leave my job and pick up my son. Or he can't go to soccer, and it has to be on a price point. The, the uh, formerly incarcerated gentleman says, LinkedIn is some old BS for 80% of the people because they don't have careers and they have gaps. And, and so most people don't have a LinkedInable, searchable career, <laughs> right? And so LinkedIn's trying to expand the market. Well, expand the market by being more human and giving a product design and some data science and some things that allow people to be found and represent the world and sell in a different way, as opposed to pushing the same product that doesn't work for most people. Right? Uber, how about you inspire uh, trips between uh, Roxbury and downtown and Newbury and Newbury to Roxbury so you don't have empty restaurants in Newbury Street <laughs> and restaurants that can't scale in Roxbury? And so what do you th how, is, how can technology products and tools and data be inspired? So we ran this thing, and guess what? You realize, hmm, there's a lot of talent. You know, one of my, hope, say, say good things about me, because hopefully one of my, my interns is here, uh, a, a senior is about to graduate in computer science uh, from Kent State in Ohio. When people say they can't find people of color in tech, I'm finding them. And I'm not going to tell you how I did it. <laughs> 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 you're too lazy to look and recruit and be a, a point for it, then shame on you, right? You can continue to look for them to come through the same places. I can try, the NBA tried that. You know, you can wait for people to come through UCLA and Notre Dame, or you can start to recruit and look at other places and have a better product of people who actually uh, can play ball. So I'm finding people who are, who are, who are, who are uh, competent. And so my, my talk is mostly about people. So what happens? People help me identify where <laughs> Uh, what the needs are and how to map them across social media and data in Boston. But not just Boston, because the city of Wake Report says Roxbury is different than Dorchester is different than other places. Race and ethnicity is different. Do you realize the, the amount of black Bostonians who are of Caribbean descent or African descent or Haitian descent and speak the Afro Latino, speak um, um, a, a combination of, of the sensibility of, of uh, kind of an African American black? Um, experience and uh, Latino experience, and the, the Haitians have a have a Creole experience as well. So how do you, how do those people who have those backgrounds experience the internet? I would ask you to do this, but I know the reception is not good here. I, I would like for as many people as you can to Google the terms female beauty and see what comes up. Just do images. Those of you can do it. Now remember, this is Google that has more data than everyone, right? And it is the term that are unqualified. Now they say any other qualification. Now see if that's personalized to you, if it's personalized to the room, 
if it's personalized to Cambridge, it's very diverse. If it's personalized for the US, if it's personalized for even the magazines that you see on the shelf. So you figure to yourself, what are you looking at and where does this data come from? And if you are someone who's looking for a more worldwide or a more robust, different view of beauty, what search would you put in? Maybe the product design is not there. Maybe it should say, here's what has shown up and ticked light most, what people have clicked on most. But maybe if you're searching for other things, maybe it's a product design thing, right? So you, maybe you can't data your way out of everything. Maybe some, some robust product design, right? But guess what? So for the, the companies that don't have data scientists, they will take in a search like that, and then they will cut it to see what are the, what is the affinity of female beauty or, or fashion or other things for um, people of color in that sample set. Well, look at the sample set. So you're measuring, you're measuring that sample set. For those who didn't Google it, it's, it's going to be, we've done it all over the country, largely uh, white thin females, right? And so then you're going to measure female sensibility within a sample set that's starting wrong. So what my friend ACLU, ACLU said is, is, is exactly correct. You have to analyze who's doing things. What's the process of thinking about data? Where is your data coming from? Right? What is the bias of that source? How do I think about analyzing it? And who's going to develop the insights? And then what is the product interface that is prioritized as you roll out your product? So we as a company recruit the people, get the insights, have a more holistic look at the data, data science, developing algorithms that allow uh, different questions to case studies to be answered, and then doing better product design, starting with those that allow businesses, governments, and large organizations to understand the total demographic easier. So we would never give you just a, a robust look at Boston without saying you really want to go deeper to look at different parts of Boston for certain questions. You have to be more intelligent. You know, Google realized that in order to open up different products, they couldn't just give you a satellite map that you can access digitally. They had to do the street level view. And the ways had to do traffic in order for you to realize where the door was and what the delivery time was going to be and where do I drop your thing, right? So we're thinking the next wave of digital and analytics and data is this really intelligent, respectful, human, diverse, and inclusive look at data and data science to develop better products.